Patton! <whistles> Patton, hey, just, uh, Patton just chased a deer. I wasn't filming. It literally just ran where yeah, Patton is now. Him. Go get the deer. <laughs> He's gone. He's going to chase it. Yeah. <laughs> he can chase it back so we can film it. <laughs> okay, chauffeur. Yeah. Let's go find that deer. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Handles there to reverse. Lift it up. Don't reverse into the lake. Yeah. Whoa, we're gonna, yeah, it's going to slip. Come on, come on. It's really strong. No, I don't it's good. Yeah, okay, wait. No, 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 go left. Oh, go left, the deer went that way. Oh, look at the sun. Yeah, it looks good. Through here, into the field. The deer's anywhere, it'll be here. Go so take a right. Now the deer usually they either hide in this area of um, where there's trees and bushes and things here, or they literally sometimes will just run over the fences and into the neighbours. There's a fields. cow. Time for exploring. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a look down here because uh, I don't normally come down here. This time of year, it's full up. Just watch the barbed wire there. How deep is it? Yeah, it's you and Patton. <laughs> you like to be in the stream. <laughs> Old roof tiles. Yeah, yeah that's weird. A good place to store them. Maybe somebody threw them here, like, just to get rid of them. Yeah, but like, do they? Yeah, yeah, they follow. got a name on it. Calvados. So it's from Normandy. They're Norman roof tiles. Yeah. That's crazy. Look, antique roof tiles from Normandy. How old are they? I don't know. Probably a over 100 years old. It's cool. We were just like, Ooh. oh, we should get down here. And now we've found this. Like, There's loads. Yeah. Come on then, don't fall over. No. I'm just in case, if you do fall, I just want to get it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we were just discussing what to film next, then uh, Michael uh, fell. I fell through a hole. Thankfully, it didn't come up much further than there, the water. You nearly lost me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to see you here, though. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this is literally the furthest corner of the Bamigny uh, estate. goes down here. Oh to this corner. What's that? It looks like a wall. That's weird. Is that a wall? I don't know, I'm gonna have to have a look. I can see. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to cross the water, but you haven't got the boots to cross the water. I'm no. gonna go and cross the water with the camera and go and investigate, because that looks like a wall. Or well, maybe it's a tree. Yeah, but yeah, so. I've never been over there before, so let's... Okay. It's okay. Right, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It's okay. Well done. So it's not a wall, it's just a pile of, well, God knows what, but yeah, it's not a wall. It looked like a wall from a distance, but how are you doing over there? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit too much branches to, uh, and those, what are they called? The thorns. 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 thorns, thorns, yeah, like the, the things that yeah, stab you. Yeah. yeah, all over me. There had been something here. Yeah, it would have. Like, yeah, it would have gone by now. So we had seen it. That's the farm just through there. Have they got chickens? Chickens? Yeah, maybe. Can you like buy egg? Right. I don't know. I've never asked. We can get milk from them. Yeah. If you want fresh milk, we just yeah, go to the farm and ask. I think it's cool. We should. It's just... Yeah, we'll get some. Yeah. All right. Let's, Let's go back. Talk. Well, where are we going now, Elias? Uh, we're just going to show the forest, like the size of it. So okay. we're driving on this big, big, big lawn. Okay. It's not really a forest, but it's not really a wood. But, so. Yeah, it's a forest. It's yeah. a small forest. It's a small forest, yeah. But it's it's big. <laughs> yeah. It's a big, small forest. <laughs> Going back in the woods. Yeah, back on safari. Back on safari, yeah. 
Around this tree. Yeah. Yeah. And then here, go right. Yeah. Go through. Oh, it's got a good way. Go through there. Yeah. That's it. Just be careful. That's yeah. it. Oh, that's it. There you go. Ah. Oh, yeah. Uh, getting sprayed with water. <laughs> yeah. Down here. Around that tree. Just be careful because it's quite close to the bank. Yeah. There you go. Here. Then left. Oh, I'm not, I'm oh not, I'm we're gonna not, get oh. stuck. I got stuck. Yeah. Uh, we're wheel spinning on the leaves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you go. What? Oh, I've got to push. Ah, put the brake, the brake. <laughs> okay. You're just filming. I'm pushing. Right, okay. I, uh, now I've got four thorns in my shoes. Like the Canons. Canon dune buggy. Yeah. Well, I think maybe we need one of those, or like a, um, a John Deere Gator. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. That suits the property more. Yeah, yeah. But a golf cart works fine. Golf cart works good if it's yeah. not too wet, like here is. It's like here, but then you just put full throttle and yeah. you gotta oh. slide through it. <laughs> this is good fun. Yeah, it is. We drove over a stick earlier. And it's just like, I thought the tire blew. No, it just snapped. It's just... <laughs> 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 yeah, we have a stick. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get rid of it when we get back. Yeah, so you want to go out of the property? Yeah, oh, just to okay. show like... The area. Okay, we'll give it a try. Go out of the gate then. Oh, there's Pat. There's Pat, mum and dad's house. Okay. Cutting it in. Go, go in. <laughs> Close this gate. Oh, there we go. Right. Cottage, cup of tea. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, what do you else you want to do? No, I don't know. <laughs> Practice editing. Oh yeah, well we can, we do, can that. do that. In you can do that in the yeah. cottage. Yeah, I'll get the laptop. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Right, we'll take the golf buggy back to the chateau and yeah. uh, I'll meet you in the cottage. Yeah. Right then. Peasant, go. See ya. I think he's been desperate to drive that thing since he got here. <laughs> right, cup of tea time. Another thing I need to do, I've got all of this fuel. See, that that is six months worth of fuel for the Arga and that is probably about seven or eight months worth there. Um, but it's in the wrong place. It all needs to be moved bag by bag into the hangar next to the cottage. So, Michael, yeah. You have to turn the key. Yeah. He didn't know how to turn it off. And uh, tomorrow, I've got another job. I need to clear out the greenhouse of all the old tomatoes, ready to plant stuff for this year. I'm right next to the um, greenhouse now, so it'd be nice to just pop out of my front door and get some fruit and vegetables. But the gate. This gate here, which is now on the floor, fell off in the wind and smashed the greenhouse. So um, we have to do something about that because that looks quite, quite sharp. So we'll have to sort that out. But yeah, huge wall garden outside the door of the cottage. Plenty of space to grow stuff, so should be cool. Time to put the kettle on. There we go. Cup of tea. And there he is. I mean, yeah. You know, you're meant to be the cameraman. I just filmed everything. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see someone else explore the place for the first time because- Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. Good. This place is an absolute mess and hasn't been touched since last year, the end of last summer. Nobody's done anything in here. And actually, some of these green tomatoes are in quite good condition still. So what I'll try and do is keep some of these because they might be good for chutney still. Uh, yeah, but what I need to do is clear out all the, the dead plants, get the beds nice, get the floor clean so that I can um, start thinking about planting seeds for this summer because I want tomatoes in here, cucumbers, peppers, chilies, anything that likes the warm places like a greenhouse, we're gonna plant that in here. 
Um, but I can't do that yet because it's it's like a bomb's gone off. Isn't it? Let me shut this door because it's very windy. It's nice and cozy in here. The last jar of chutney I made was in 2017 and it's still really good. And actually it just improves with age. And this is what I did last time. I just used up all the old tomatoes that weren't rotten, that were still green, because they're perfect for that kind of thing. But obviously a lot of these are no good. So if I put all the bad ones in a bucket, These ones are not good. See that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. We won't use those ones. I think that one's a bit black on there, but I think it'll be okay for chutney and that one. We've got some so far. Not enough for a good chutney, but we'll see how many we can get first. These ones are rotten. What else can I put in chutney? green tomatoes what's this we've got a marrow here can that be put in a chutney quite possibly yeah there's nothing wrong with that look at that what about these little peppers do you know what these pepper plants are still alive i think i'll leave those in because they're not going to die anytime now because they've survived through all the cold weather so they'll probably survive for the rest of the year now right that could be used Oh, that's a good one. But yeah, that can go. Right, now it's time to just get, get clearing. Is it doing well? Hi, everyone. This is Florio. He lives about two miles away. He's a personal trainer and he's come to get me in shape. So, uh, yeah. well, yeah. oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's Ali. He works, works you <coughs> really, really hard. Woo. We make another one. Another one? Yes. Going well. Yeah, it's going well. I've got more than I bargained for. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Alright, we're back to work, Elias. <laughs> yeah, we're back to work. We just need to get um, all of the mud off of the floor now into this wheelbarrow, get the beds all cleaned up, find somewhere for all these pots and rubbish, and then. Uh, it should be ready to start planting things. Well, obviously we've just um, cleaned out the greenhouse yesterday. So we're back in here and we're, um, I've turned all of these beds over with a fork and I've put this, this is vermiculite. It's a type of fossilized um, seabed. 
um, it's old shells and things that have been fossilized over years um, and it's obviously it's uh, great as a soil improver so um, what it does is it aerates the soil but it also um, is really absorbent so it's going to hold moisture um, in the summer months when it gets really hot and dry in here um, in the soil and it's also going to break the soil apart as well so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just pouring it on top of the beds forking them over and all the weeds and things that come to the surface we'll just pull them out and and then it's uh, then it's ready so we're almost there so yeah we found the lizard yeah, Elias is, was just emptying out this um, plastic pot, which is full of water, and there was a little lizard in there, and God knows how long he's been in there. Yeah. Um, but he survived in yeah, the water. He looks, he looks healthy. He yeah. looks okay. Yeah. So maybe we should release him into the soil, because it's warm in the greenhouse. There you go. Yeah. Hello, mate. Oh, yeah. He looks a bit bewildered, but I think he's going to be okay. Yeah. We're just about to clear out all of the rubbish. Most of it's gone. We've got, I mean, there was hundreds and hundreds of plastic pots in here. So they've all been bagged up yeah. and put in the potting shed for use later on. How's he doing? He's climbing the wall now. Is he? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's exactly what he needs. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, what he'll do is he'll go and find a little hole in the stone yeah. and sit in there and sleep and probably yeah, warm up. Because it gets quite warm in here during the day. Yeah, it was hot before. Like we had to be here in our t-shirt because yeah. it was so hot. But um, obviously we, we can't put him outside. Well, we've got one quite happy little lizard here. He uh, seems to be really interested in what we're doing. He's watching us and he hasn't run away. But we need to think of a name for him. So if anyone would like to name the greenhouse lizard, uh, please feel free to put a comment in the uh, comment section and I'll pick the best one. Uh, I got uh, Peter or Patrick. Peter. Yeah. Peter, yeah, well we don't need to name him then. Peter the lizard. No, but I think we have we should have some suggestions from Okay, the yeah. Suggestions from the viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so it's all done. All clean. Beds finished. All the weeds have gone. We've got one pepper plant. I think it's like a bell pepper. That survived, so we're gonna keep that. Um, but everything else was dead. Got a nice little shelf here with some tools and things on, nice and clean. And just here, we discovered a lemon tree. Now, I don't know why this lemon tree is here because nobody planted it, but three years ago, there was a lemon tree in here in this exact spot. Um, but we took it out and we moved it, but possibly um, it's regrown from the roots, we don't know. But I think it can stay actually, it's quite nice. Um, and obviously a greenhouse is the best place for lemons because it's nice and hot. And uh, just need to clear up outside tomorrow. Yeah, back to work tomorrow. Back to work tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Right, so I, um, I've got a plan for the greenhouse this year. And what I want to do is I want to plant, um, instead of just normal red tomatoes like I normally do, I want to plant heritage tomatoes. And obviously packets of seeds in France are really expensive. So what I do is I have a little trick. Um, I go to uh, um, a supermarket, like an organic supermarket, and I buy heritage tomatoes. Just buy the tomatoes. They have all different types, all different shapes. You've got um, orange, yellow, green, even these sort of purpley tomatoes. Um, uh, what do you call these? Plum tomatoes, all different kinds. Um, and these ones, although it's quite ripe at the minute, these are pink tomatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to extract the seeds from tomatoes, ferment them in water to get rid of any diseases um, that they might have picked up, um, and then how to uh, eventually dry them um, and grow them yourself. Um, and it's much cheaper. Um, and that way you can actually go um, to the supermarket and you can pick the nicest tomatoes. Um, obviously, you can kind of tell by the shape and the colour um, and if it's a healthy tomato that the seeds from that tomato are usually going to be the same. So what you're gonna to need to extract the seeds from tomatoes and ferment them um, is you'll need a tomato, whatever tomato you, you want from a, a supermarket, um, a jar, some water, some cling film, 
uh, and a label so you know which one's which. So really simple. Right, so you don't need to sterilise the jars because in fact you want some bacteria in there so that the, um, the seeds ferment. So what you do is you cut open your tomato. I'm actually going to use these tomatoes for the chutney. So cut them into segments like this. Um, and you see here you've got the seeds and they're um, coated in a gel and it's called albumin. Uh, and the seed won't grow if it's coated in that. That needs to rot away so that the seed can actually grow. So what you do is take out the middle part like this. There we go. Scoop the album in with the seeds in it into a jar like that. And you obviously get quite a lot of seeds in a tomato, so you only need one unless you're planting fields of them. Right, so there you go. You've got the albumin with the seeds in it. Um, so what you're gonna do now, break it up a little bit so the seeds can uh, escape. You're gonna put some water in with that, just like that. There you go. Um, get some cling film, put that over the jar, like that. And then write a label. Now I have no idea what that tomato is called, but it's sort of a red, a red tomato with a pointy tip. So there we go. So we know what that one is. So you just want to repeat the process for all your different tomatoes, label them up, uh, write which color they are, um, which is mostly important. Um, and then that, you can leave that on a shelf or in a cupboard somewhere dark or wherever you want, somewhere a bit warm. Um, I'll put these in the cupboard down here and leave them for a week um, and probably take them out every day and just give them a little, try not to let it drip everywhere, give them a little, just a shake um, and then put them back. And then what's gonna happen is the albumin that surrounds the seeds is gonna rot away um, and the water's gonna ferment. And what happens is um, that process actually destroys any, what would you call it, diseases that the tomato might have picked up uh, in its life. Um, and actually means that the seeds are really, really healthy and they'll be disease-free plants. So really simple. Uh, and then the rest of the tomatoes, the bits that haven't got the seeds in, they can go in the chutney, so nothing's wasted. And I've got all of the um, tomatoes from the greenhouse, the green ones, plus um, the ones that I obviously just took the seeds out of. Uh, and there's uh, just over a kilo there. So I do have a preserving pan for making chutney and jam, but um, unfortunately the base isn't flat. So I tried it on the Arga hot plate and then not enough of the copper touches the hot plate to get hot enough to cook. So unfortunately I can't use this um, on the Arga, but it's great over a gas stove and I've used it many times. It's an antique one, um, but unfortunately no, I can't use that today. So I'm gonna use um, my cast iron casserole dish instead. You need, and you can use a saucepan for making chutney or jam as long as it's got a thick base um, so that it absorbs uh, the heat evenly, um, then you'll be fine. So I'm just gonna get that. Um, and it's quite simple to make. You just throw all the ingredients in, bring it to the boil and let it simmer for an hour. And then you put it in a jar. So for this recipe, you're going to need um, green tomatoes. I haven't got green tomatoes. I've got um, a mixture here of green tomatoes from the greenhouse, plus some, obviously the ones I just took the seeds from. Um, you're going to need a kilo of red onions. Uh, I've got a kilo, um, I didn't have a kilo of red onions, so I've used 500 grams of red onions and 500 grams of pink onions, that's all I had. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, I've got some um, three or four large um, chopped garlic cloves just there. Um, Tina, be quiet. TT, be quiet. The uh, recipe says 150 grams of raisins. Well, I actually had 200 grams of dates left over from the Moroccan beef stew. So I've chopped those up small um, and I've put some raisins uh, with those. So that's actually probably about 300 grams there, but you don't have to follow the recipe exactly. And I've also put some chopped ginger in there. Um, the recipe says a litre of malt vinegar. I don't have a litre of malt vinegar, but I do have half a litre of red wine vinegar and also half a litre of just white vinegar. And also you're going to need 500 grams of brown sugar. I've got a mixture there of um, golden brown sugar and dark muscovado brown sugar, but you can use any brown sugar. Uh, obviously I've got a couple of bay leaves as well. I'm gonna put those in. Um, you're going to need, the recipe says a quarter of a teaspoon 
of cayenne pepper. I don't have cayenne pepper, but I do have um, a jar of Piment d'Espelette, which is like a French equivalent. So I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of that, and you're gonna need some black pepper. I'm just gonna add the tomatoes. Put those all in there on the heat. Right, so tomatoes in. Next, put your onions in. So next, put your sugar in. Put that in. There's about 300 grams of chopped dates, raisins, and a little bit of chopped ginger just in there. So I'm gonna put that in now as well. Oh, we're getting quite full. But this will cook down, hopefully. Break that up. Next, you want your chopped garlic and some bay leaves. I've got about four bay leaves there. I'll give it a nice flavor. Put that in. I'm gonna now add the vinegar. So, half a litre of red wine vinegar and half a litre of white wine vinegar. So you put that in, make sure you dissolve all the sugar with it. Look at that. So now you're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of um, cayenne pepper. I don't have cayenne pepper. As I said, I'm gonna use Pimon d'Espelette, which is a little bit spicier than cayenne pepper, but it's only a quarter teaspoon. Um, I'm gonna put that in. So next you're gonna to wanna to put a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon in there. Perfect. And then lastly, you want two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons. And to be honest, I'm gonna put another teaspoon because I've got extra ingredients from tomatoes and onions. So there we go. Right, so all I need to do now is wait for this to come to the boil um, and then I'm gonna move it over here onto the um, simmering plate and I'm just gonna let it simmer away um, for probably about 20 minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is actually, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna put that casserole dish in the simmering oven and then just leave it in there uh, with the lid on. Um, and then just check it now and again, give it a stir and make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. So after about an hour, depending on how hot your cooker is, it should be done. If not, you might need to leave it for another half an hour to an hour, but we're gonna see after an hour how it's doing. Um, and then we can put it in jars. Okay, so the chutney is ready. Uh, it's been bubbling away. I left it for another hour, so it's been a couple of hours now. Um, I just need to get the jars out of the oven, which I've sterilized, um, and then we can put it in the jars, and then it's done. So what I've done is I put some jars in the oven to sterilize with a little bit of water in the bottom, um, just to sterilize the rubber seals. And they've been in there for a couple of hours now. That oven is about 100 degrees Celsius, which is boiling point. So I just need to tip out the water. So there's fish out the rubber seal. There we go. So look at that, it's completely changed now. It's got a really nice brown color. So it's really simple. I'm gonna try and put all of the chutney into the jars without dripping it down the sides. So there we go. So we've only just managed to get three jars of chutney out of that. Uh, they are quite big jars. Obviously you can use a much, much smaller jar if you want um, and get loads of small jars. Um, but obviously once one of these is opened, it's not gonna last very long because it's gonna be really nice. Although chutney, you can't eat it straight away. It's just gonna taste like pure vinegar. Um, so this needs to sit for probably a month, maybe even two, the longer the better, um, and the flavour will develop and that vinegary taste will slowly go away. So I'm gonna put these rubber seals on now. So just make sure you do this with clean hands. Um, I've given my hands a good scrub so that there's no bacteria there. Um, 
And there's a couple of things you can do. You can put this in a water bath, um, or you can put that back in the oven with the lid off, just to make sure it's sterilized before you close it. But these jars have literally just come out of the oven um, and that's really, really hot. So I'm just going to close those now and they should be fine. What's gonna happen is because the steam inside the jar um, was pushing all of the air out, what's gonna happen is that steam that's left in there will condense and it will create a vacuum which will actually seal this shut um, and that will keep it fresh um, until you're ready to use it. So they can go, once they've cooled down, they can go in the cupboard and be left for as long as, as long as you want. I mean, that will keep for at least a year. I made a jar of chutney like this three years ago and I'm still eating it now, um, a big, big jar, uh, and it's still really nice. So um, as long as the jars were really clean when it went in, it should last for a long, long time. So I'm just gonna wash that up um, and we are done. So just wanna say um, thanks for watching this video and I will see you um, very soon for another one. Um, and hopefully we'll come up with some more interesting stuff to show you. So I'll see you soon.